The Drive-By Podcast, episode 24, is sponsored by Playground, where gaming is elevated. Next level. Check out the Chase the Ace game show, which I host every single Sunday, beginning at 1 o'clock. That's when we do the draws every 30 minutes, as we get 15 winners who will be going for the current progressive jackpot this coming weekend on Sunday, just after 8 o'clock. I host the game show. It's at $18,000. And then after Chase the Ace, we wrap it up with the Lucky Keys Grand Finale Night, Sunday, July 3rd, for your shot to win a fully electric Mazda MX-30 GT. To get your $10 in freeway play, click on the link below if you're watching on YouTube or go to playground.ca slash freewayfrank. This is the Drive-By with Freeway Frank. It's the Drive-By Solo Sessions, episode 24. No one sitting across from me. It's just uh, yours truly again with lots to say. Thank you so much for watching again this week. I was talking about this on my social media, on Instagram specifically. I had um, Center Field, which is a great song from the 1980s. The COVID score, scoreboard was up. Bottom of the ninth inning, Justin Trudeau, five. Freeway Frank, one. Okay, I know Justin Trudeau didn't get COVID five times, but it sure seems that way. What is it he up to? Somebody told me it was two. I think it's more like three, three or four. Something like that. It's many times for a guy who's been so juiced up. He's been juiced. How many times? Three, four boosters, five. I don't even know. He's taking them in every arm and every... Orphus, third or fourth, third or fourth time. You got to wonder now what's going on. Or is he hiding? Is he in hiding because of everything that's going on? Suspicious that the news would come out this week that they were lifting restrictions and the travel mandates were being um, dropped. Or should I use the word suspended because that's the word they used. And so maybe a perfect time to head back into the bunker, kind of like his friend south of us, uh, Joe Biden, where he spent a lot of time in his, uh, in his basement and hiding out. I think uh, Trudeau hides when the pressure starts to get to him. So it's very possible. Now, the word they used, by the way, when they lifted restrictions, or they, they officially lift restrictions on June 20th, is suspended. Now, I don't know about you. I never got suspended in school, but I know some people who did. I came close to getting suspended once when I jumped the fence and may have punched somebody after they threw a snowball and hit me right in the face. I came close to getting suspended once okay, in elementary school, but I didn't. But the point is, when you get suspended in high school, you get suspended and you eventually come back. You're reinstated, right? So they could have used the word over, terminated, we're never going back down this road. No, suspended means at some point it gives them the opportunity, like maybe in the fall, and I know you don't want to hear it, and let's not spend too much time depressing more people because people just got some positive news. And, that, and now what? It's going to come back? Well, I'm just saying we've been down this road before. And don't want to say told you so when we told you so many times. So it just gives them, as in the Liberal Party or the party in power, in this case, the Liberal NDP, the choice to reactivate, to reinstate mandates, to make sure people are masked again, lower capacities, whatever it needs, whatever they need to do, in order to protect themselves, their failed healthcare system with both Francois Legault and the federal government, whatever they need to do to show their people, the population, they're doing something, but never fixing what the issue is or what the issue has been for decades and decades, my entire lifetime, specifically. So... No, don't fix things with every wave so that the next wave, we don't inconvenience an entire population once again, you know, kill their livelihood, ruin their mental health even more, delay other important medical procedures like cancer treatment and all that. No, you know, prevent suicides. 
No, we're not going to do that. We're not going to fix things. We're not going to have put ideas in motion and make sure we're protected with the next few waves. When that moment comes, well, we already controlled the population. We have already uh, imposed curfews, social distancing, masks, whatever it took, lower capacities, shutting down society. We're going to do it again. And it's very possible. I don't trust them. Okay? And I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I don't trust these people. God forbid you don't trust the government. <laughs> the people that are in it for themselves to begin with. Let's be honest. These are not the greatest. I'm not saying all politicians are crooked, but you got to question some people and their insanity for going into politics to begin with. Sometimes it seems they're putting their best foot forward. You know, when Justin Trudeau came in, he was rocking and rolling, good looking guy, whatever. I never thought he was good looking, but I know I obsessed with that, but he's not that good looking. So, but he comes in, his hair all quaffed, young prime minister saying all the right things, freedom, democracy, everybody living in peaceful harmony. And then he does this in the last two years where he stigmatizes, vilifies a certain percentage of the population for not doing what they were told and what he basically told everyone was needed as the supreme leader and um, leader. Manager, he is the supreme manager. Not even good at that. So, nothing wrong with people having an opinion and speculating that we may be screwed again in the fall. I have a feeling that, you know, when the going gets tough, instead of the tough get going, they're going to just go back to the, the only thing they know, which is closing everything down, masking people up. Let's go. Because this is the kind of leadership. Again, I use the word leader mildly, we have here in this, in this country. So with our prime minister, with one of our biggest exports to the world, pop star Justin Bieber, the restrictions getting dropped, with all these stories coming out in the last week, to me, they're all interrelated. They're all interrelated. Now, Justin Bieber comes out, mentions he has facial paralysis, Ramsey Hunt syndrome, which is caused by the chickenpox virus and shingles and serious. I mean, he's his face is contorting as he's trying to speak and tell his fans and his audience what's going on with him. But as I said, interrelated all these things I mentioned because... Something, something doesn't seem right. And there's nothing wrong with people. You know, they say, don't speculate. You're not a doctor. You're not a scientist. You're not a virologist. Don't speculate. Well, I'm sorry, but you haven't done a very good job as the government. Okay? And I'm not taking anything away from the medical community who have worked very hard during the last two years. But there's been a lot of missteps. We have to be honest with that. You know? Don't wear the mask, wear the mask, don't do this, do this, let's do this now, you need this, we, need, we have to do, you know, whatever. There's been a lot of missteps. So people are allowed to doubt you, and people are allowed to not be convinced that anything coming out of the mouths of these politicians is necessarily um, factual or the you know the the thing we should be following anymore so people have the right to feel the way they feel and doubt their government we're allowed to do that we don't live in a dictatorship or do we so as i said all these things intertwine and it broke my heart to see justin bieber honestly you know not that i'm his biggest fan but i like the guy and it broke my heart to see him because does he even at night i mean he can't be he seems like a rather intelligent guy, and he's a man of faith. There's no way that he's sitting at the kitchen table, the dining room table, or about to watch a Netflix show with, with Haley, with his wife. And when no one's around, they're just talking to each other, going, D do you think it could be the Jap? Of course this came up. Even if, 
it didn't come up necessarily in conversation. We as humans think about a lot of things. A lot of things run through, a lot of thoughts run through our, our, our minds. It must have come up. Of course it came up. I know people that have taken the jab and had side effects. Several people, like uh, more than a dozen. And they didn't want to believe it, but they did believe it, and then they found out, yes, it was because of that. And other people, obviously, who have taken it and have had absolutely no repercussions. But my point is, the side effects do exist, and they've been documented. So to simply say, STF, you know, FU, mind your own business, don't speculate, you're not a doctor. It's not good enough. People are allowed, as humans, we're allowed to ask questions. And that's a society we live in right now. You can't ask questions anymore. No, no, you can't. Because if you do, well, then you're part of the alt-right, you're a, a white supremacist, you're a racist, you're a misogynist, all these crazy things. You're a conspiracy theorist, you're not all there, you're... Uh, unbalanced individual, you're basically nuts if you question any of the, imagine questioning, yeah. You know, let's just follow everything these these out of control politicians with power say. Just follow. Some people are okay with that, I'm not okay with that. And there's a huge segment of the population who feels the way I do, I question everything. So, getting back to Bieber, there's no way he's not in his mind thinking, could this be because of the jab? There's no way one member in his family has not contacted him from Ontario. I don't know about Haley and her family back in New York, but and said, you know, maybe you should speak to a couple of more doctors. Maybe you should speak to a couple of more specialists and people just to find out what are we talking here? I mean, is it is it possible or is this just the Ramsey Hunt syndrome as we know it? Or is there something else to this that we don't know? Because his wife a couple of months ago, I mean, God forbid you speculate, his wife a couple of months ago, also young and healthy, got a stroke, blood clots. I'm just saying, I'm not sitting here to throw a wrench in, in, in what they're going through and just say, well, this is it for sure. I'm not trolling on social media like some people in his comments, some offering support, others just saying, gee, dude, I wonder what it is, huh? Like, are you that stupid? Are you that gullible? That's not right either, right? Because it's easy to troll on social media and be a keyboard warrior and say what you have to say. And all I'm saying is, can we not question it? And is, you know, Rolling Stone magazine and a couple of other media outlets, when they come out, you know, with their headlines like they do, and automatically trash the other side, like Rolling Stone magazine. And the reason why I mentioned Rolling Stone, it's a music magazine, Justin Bieber's a pop artist. You know, I'm not going to use the word, because when you say the word, it flags my videos on YouTube or anyone's videos. Anyone who does stuff on YouTube knows if you say certain words, like the C word, the vid, or, you know, the the V word, the jab, you get flagged, they start checking everything, and some of your videos may not be allowed to, um, they fail the community, their community guidelines, basically. So I'm going to say the anti, this is the Rolling Stone magazine caption, anti veers are flipping out over Justin Bieber's facial paralysis, another magazine. Anti-veers seize on Justin Bieber's facial paralysis as proof of a COVID conspiracy. Well, yeah, there are people who take it to a, an extreme, you know. People who think the, the, the world is flat. People who take, you know, it to the, you know, 9-11 conspiracy theorists and people who take it to the, and, you know, they have the right to that opinion is my point. But they take it to that extreme. And then there are people on this side who are extremists on, on this side as well with their craziness and wokeness. And I always like to consider myself somewhere in the middle of the insanity. But my point is, look, right away, they label anti v So, well, no, well, just, just because you're anti-veed, or sorry, because you're unveed, it doesn't mean 
you're an anti veer. It just that that's not what it means. It means you didn't sign up for it. Or you're okay. You don't you don't you don't want to take it, you're not interested. You have that freedom of choice, you would think, in a democracy in a country like Canada. Until they guilt you out to the point where so many people had to go get it to live their lives or a normal life as much as they could in the last couple of years. But it's it's you know it's crazy to me when you see these articles and these captions is is like, well they're just as bad. So for the people on this side who are saying it's got to be the jab, it's got to be that, it's got to be that, you know, we know it's bullshit, we know it's that, we know that they're hiding something. There's people on this side saying that the people on this side are absolutely crazy, and vice versa. So again, I always like to be the person, and I hope you are too, watching this or listening to this. Balancing both sides saying, what are we dealing here? Is it possible? And I believe it's very possible. Very possible. It's no coincidence that both husband and wife are struggling with something or have struggled with something in the last couple of months. And we all know of people who have had side effects and they seem to be getting brushed under the carpet. You know? I'm not saying people didn't die before the vid. People did die. But it just seemed like you would hear more like, you know, died of a heart attack. James Gandolfini was overweight. He was obese. He died of a heart attack. This person died of that. This person died of this. This person died of that. Natural causes, whatever they get. Nowadays, we don't get an answer for Ray Liotta. We don't get an answer for Bob Saget. Now, I'm not saying it's necessarily what everybody's thinking, but I'm saying, and people died before. People will die die during and people will die after it's just the case i'm just saying is it possible that we've been told a bunch of lies and these things are not as effective as we've been told they are because they don't seem to be because uh, there's a lot of holes all right and if you're okay with taking something and then you still get sick that's fine i'm not and I know a lot of people who are not, um, are not okay with that. So here's where we're at. Speculate all you want. Have your thoughts and opinions. And these people will do the same. Balancing both sides and coming up with some kind of logical explanation for all this is what I'm about. And again, I say it's very possible because... As I said, all these topics intertwined. Something doesn't make sense. You know? Justin Trudeau getting it third, fourth, fifth. I don't even know how many. Bieber with his facial, you know, paralysis. Restrictions being dropped, but they're just suspended. We could bring them back at any time. And we know, I mean, you heard his minister say, we know that, uh, you know, first and second should be good, but but no, we're going to have to consider more in the fall. So they're not letting go of the reins. They don't want this to end. It just seems like in their overprotection of, you know, wanting to save everybody, they're making everybody's life more miserable. Because in my opinion... This stays with us. It continues to stay with us. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you've had the vid, you know. Some people have had it a lot milder than others. Most people have compared it to a flu. I've had my experiences I talked about several episodes ago. My point is we need to learn to live with it like so many other places have and move on. Because what are we going to do when a real, real virus hits? And by real, I mean hundreds of millions of deaths. A serious contagion that sees body bags at every corner of the street with the military picking them up like trash. Then we're going to be in big trouble. Because if we're acting like this now. Now, I, and I understand we have to be cautious in the beginning, but we found out so much during the course of the two years, some people never change. Some people are still stuck in the February 2020, March 2020 bubble. They can't get out of that. 
And for most, most of them, they're not to blame. It's our government that has made them this way. It's a PTSD. It really is. It's, it's, they can't let it go. And they truly believe that the um, people that have swallowed the pill and drank the Kool-Aid are the people who have not participated. Believe what you want. But when you see these examples happening, it, to me, it's, it's insane to not think first. Even if you are jabbed, it doesn't matter. Jabbed, unjabbed, it doesn't matter. But these things happen. You know, COVID gets, uh, Trudeau gets the vid again. Bieber with his announcement about the Ramsey Hunt syndrome and him struggling with that. And then his wife gets blood clots and a stroke and all these things. I mean, you just take them at face value. So you, you turn a card and it's like, oh, it's the five of diamonds. Yeah, because that's what it is. It's the five of diamonds. Yeah, face value. But you don't question anything. About the way, you know, was the, the, the deck properly shuffled? Was it, are, are the cards legit? Are, the, are they marked? Because cards get marked. Like nothing, you know, you, you just accept everything for what it is. And you go about, you go on, a, you know, with life, you, like everything is honest and nobody's trying to screw you when everybody is, unfortunately, uh, from scams to everything else going on in the world, people are are generally not very nice. <laughs> and uh, we can't trust everybody. So and sometimes your closest friends and family turn on you too, as we've experienced in the last couple of years. I'm just saying we need to be, we need to allow for discussion, debate, and conversation. And so I truly believe that these people have, you know, these pop stars, these celebrities, whoever they may be, regular everyday people, have these discussions at their dinner table at night and question, and question, what do you think and all that? I know, because we do it and we know people do it. This is what humans do. Can't be they're that close-minded and have blinders on if they do that's really scary considering their stand in the world their popularity their ability to speak to a wide audience it's scary that they would have those blinders on and not be open-minded to hearing everything that's what i'm about hearing it all francois lego the premier of quebec's approval ratings are plummeting i saw some of the numbers i don't know about plummeting but they're dropping and it seems like according to the latest poll he's not as popular as he was a month ago maybe it's bill 96 coming back to bite him in the in the derriere who knows but i'll tell you this quick story i mean and you never know i still believe he's gonna win in a landslide in the fall but I would like nothing more than see, you know, the Conservative Party of Quebec, Eric Zuhaim, who seems very grounded, um, very well spoken, love what he stands for. You know, beat him in um, in a tight race, come back to beat him, overtake him, be amazing. But I just. Unfortunately, don't see that happening because I think Legault has been able to convince most of the population of Quebec that um, he did a great job. But I just wanted to mention this story really quickly. I had to I had an issue with a product that I own, an appliance, let's say, that I own, and I had to call up the store I purchased it at. I had a conversation in French because I speak French. Then a couple of minutes into the conversation, the guy, you know, heard my name, my last name, and all. he started speaking English to me naturally and went into the English because he could speak perfect English. We had a conversation. That's what I love about Quebec, right? You respect each other, started the conversation in French. It was at least 10 minutes into it. Anyway, nice man. We have a conversation. And then I had to make a phone call 
to the head office of this product that I bought in the United States because there was some kind of issue when it came to the warranty. So I went to the head office to speak to, obviously, an English representative for this company. I have the conversation, and it took me like an hour to have this conversation with a person, to speak to someone in the first place. Then I have this conversation with the person. She was sweet. She puts me on hold for another half hour because she's on hold with the Quebec office. And there is not one person in the office because this gentleman I was speaking to wasn't there who could speak English. So they were speaking to her and bro they weren't understanding. She finally comes back to the, to the call. I was about to... To hang up and she says to me she goes well i just had the most frustrating conversation no one at the quebec office and anyone who, <laughs> who came on and attempted i couldn't understand them and they couldn't understand me she said no one sp spoke english at, at, at this place and i said that's impossible because i spoke to a gentleman in french 10 minutes later he spoke perfect english and she said well i just spent half an hour sorry sir that i had to keep you on hold but i i I just spent half an hour trying to, and they, they gave up, and they hung up. They hung up on her. That's what she told me. So, first thing that came to mind is, how could the French language be in danger when not one person, either, they refused to speak English, but they didn't. They attempted, as per what the representative from the United States, the American, told me. Or, they haven't learned to speak English properly or at least comprehend the English. Their English comprehension is not very good and weren't able to weren't able to speak to their American counterpart or representative about products that they sell in the Quebec store. And they're the only distributor of these massive products in Quebec. No one in the store was available to speak to her in English, which concerns me. But on top of that, they're doing business and selling and making money with these products. And so, as I said, this is what I concluded with. So I, I truly believe that probably they didn't have anybody there who could speak English properly, which, which shocks me. So what, is, what are they worried about? <laughs> what is Quebec worried about? What is the government of Quebec worried about? No one can speak English. So there you go. There's proof right there. You're not teaching the generation how to speak Although we know people are learning how to speak English, of course. But there seems to be no problem there because everybody's speaking French. They could barely speak English. So is Quebec really in danger of losing their, their, their language and their identity? I don't think so at all. And that's just one example right there. And again, I say I'm concerned because no one could speak English properly. And have that level of comprehension where they could have the conversation. And at the same time, they're speaking French to the point where they haven't learned English. So what's the worry here? If anything, they should be worried about these companies working with them in the future. Because if they can't communicate, again, it's going to scare off a lot of these big brands to leave Quebec once again. Like the mass exoduses of the past. And we're going to be back down that road of companies leaving because they can't do business here. I had to bring up that story because it really amazed me. It really shocked me. All right. Playground. Gaming elevated. The place to be in the Montreal area, in the Mohawk Nation, 20 minutes south of downtown Montreal in Ganawagi. They've got the electronic gaming machines so many machines, so many giveaways and jackpots. You could go to their Instagram play a page at Playground, at Playground YUL to see some of the latest winners. On the poker side, this is a poker room that you haven't seen anywhere else besides maybe Las Vegas. And I'm telling you, I've been to a lot of places in Vegas and Sin City. And one of my favorite rooms, my favorite room in North America is Playground where the current jackpot has surpassed. Now, it could go any time, so who knows, by the time I, you know, this podcast gets seen or heard, it could have already hit, but 
as I'm speaking now, it's over $2 million, the Bad Beat jackpot at Playground. $2 million. Show me one other place in North America that has a $2 million. Nowhere. I'll answer for you. Nowhere else. Incredible. The Bad Beat jackpot over $2 million. Of course, we have Chase the Ace on Sundays. We have Free Gas Tuesdays where you can win free gas. If gassing is not your thing, you want to win an electric car, part of the Lucky Keys promotion and the finale on July 3rd, somebody will be starting their brand new Mazda MX-30 GT electric vehicle worth $55,000. Playground. Gaming Elevated. The place to be. Go check it out with your friends and family for a beautiful night out or weekend afternoon. Summer is here. It is an absolutely incredible facility with great employees that take care of you. Playground.ca for more details or go to playground.ca slash freeway frank to get your $10 in freeway play or click on the link below if you're watching on YouTube and do it right now. My stomach is growling. Hopefully no one heard that. At the time of this recording, it's near lunchtime. It's, it's almost lunchtime. But I mentioned it because it was loud. <laughs> Another thing that keeping with the way things are run in the province here specifically in Quebec and Canada. This is weird. I've been wanting to see a specialist in the last couple of months for something. I got an appointment and then the appointment was delayed to another date. And then the administrative assistant calls me back from this place to tell me that my appointment has been changed and my specialist, my doctor has been changed to another doctor. I was like, why? And she said to me, conflict of interest. I said, well, conflict of interest, well, what is it? The specialist, the doctor lives on your street, Frank. So she cannot see you. I was like, what? But wait a minute, I got referred to the specialist because I need to see somebody and I need to get down to what, you know, I'm okay, but I need to get down to finding out Every test I've done, I've done a million tests, uh, they can't find anything. So my doctor says, you need to see the specialist. She's great. But now I can't because they live on my street. Am I missing something here? Has anyone heard about this before? So they can't see me because they live on my street. So if I'm dying and in need of health care, after all the tax money that we pay here in this province especially, I can't see the best person or the person I need to see as recommended by my doctor because they live on my street. So just curious, if I fall down and drop uh, to my knees of a heart attack or some other condition out of my lawn and this individual is driving by because she lives on my street, it's a conflict of interest. Have you heard about this before? Because I thought this was insanity. Now, what my mind put together and my brain put together instead because, no, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I'm a realist and... I'm not paranoid, but this is what my mind put together. Okay, she probably knows my stand on some things in the last couple of years and my thoughts and opinions and probably doesn't want to see me because, you know, I'm guessing a couple of things and doesn't want to see me. That's more like it, but obviously they're not going to tell you that because, and I'll be the first to admit it on a future episode of the drive-by and come back on here and say, oh, conflict of interest does exist. Yes, they don't do that. You know, you can't see somebody. I've heard of it existing at Canada Post. If you know somebody and they're in your family, they can be your supervisor, whatever the case is. So, But I just find it crazy that it exists in our medical system. Because if I need to see somebody to get down to, you know, find out why see me, find out why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling and... I need to see a specialist and the person can't see me because they live on my street. Someone help me with this, please. Make me understand. What am I missing here? Because I've never heard I've never <laughs> heard of this anywhere else. It's just bizarre to me. You know, makes you kind of go, huh? Things that make you go, hmm. Yeah, exactly. Did you hear about, so there was a heist, I think I think it was at a jewelry store or some kind of robbery. I didn't get the story, the, the, um, 
the main part of the story, there was a robbery, okay? That's, that's the important thing. And so the thieves break in, they steal the jewelry, take the money, whatever, and as they're walking out, one of the thieves, one of the robbers, uh, is stops to try to pick up, he sees an attractive employee working at the, uh, at the place and tries to, uh, to get her number. I'm not making this up. And so uh, she says no. <laughs> Because, you know, I'm thinking, uh, you know, prerequisite to finding a boyfriend is, uh, you know, uh, not a thief or a bank robber. You know, that's not a good thing and not into people who steal. So uh, she said no. And he insisted. And as the other thieves left and everything, he was there still masked behind the counter saying, let me get your number. You know, I'm really <laughs> interested until she finally said no. Two or three times. I don't know if he was holding a gun or whatever the case is. Regardless, she's like, no, I'm not giving you my number. And he eventually left. But to think of the think of that story for a second and how crazy and insane it is. Somebody's holding up a um, you know, a jewelry store or whatever, and they're there to commit the crime, and then what, they see the love of their life? <laughs> they're like, I want to hook up with this, give me your number. You know, can you imagine? If she did, she never knows if she's given her number to several people. But let's say she does know. She's only given her number to one person. Actually, that would have been a great way to maybe apprehend the thief. Yeah, here is my number. At some point, he's going to call. And maybe when they hook up for the date, the police is waiting for him. That would make the most sense to me, right? <laughs> it's, just, it's just unbelievable. To me that this would happen i had to read the story thrice uh tr yeah thrice i had to read it three times because i didn't believe it the first few times incredible so i wanted to talk about before ending the podcast this week something that i've been thinking about and I've mentioned previously, if you've gotten to this point of the podcast, it means, uh, and I'm not saying people are not fans or not listeners if they don't make it to the end, listening to a couple of minutes of the podcast a few times a week, listening to the whole thing, listening to half a thing is much appreciated. I thank you, honestly, for uh, following the drive-by, for liking, for subscribing on the YouTube page, for making comments, for giving me five stars that would be nice even though a couple of people gave some um who gives a one star that has to be somebody that doesn't really like me personally because i don't think this podcast is worth a one star it's it's got to be worth at least two 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 and a half but it's something that i've been wanting to to bring up and i have mentioned but now i want to get more into it and i want to hear from people who have made it this far in the podcast comment and uh, or you could um, you could comment for everyone to see or you could dm me and i really want to hear what what people who are true fans of the drive-by think because i've been thinking about ways to improve this podcast now i'm going to be straight up here having had a radio background for nearly three decades my job consisted consisted of waking up at four o'clock in the morning, going in and executing a radio, a morning radio show with my co-host and producer for almost you know a decade here in Montreal, and then my career, which involved many other radio stations across Canada. And so I come, my background is media, legacy media, and my background is radio broadcasting, where I did something every day. So look. For me to do something and for me to record a podcast once a week, some people would think should be pretty easy for a guy who did it five days a week, turns on his microphone and just starts speaking. No, believe it or not, because it, it's, not, it's not easy. And I've spoken to other people who do podcasts and other people who are involved in the podcast community and producing podcasts and sales of podcasts, and they all say the same thing. Producing one podcast per week is very difficult it's a lot harder than you think producing it properly so you know to come in and do a morning radio show it's just a completely different execution not easy either but 
it's something that you know i was i believed i was a natural with i come in i do it this is podcasts are pre-recorded some are done live but there's a part of me thinking now is there an opportunity to do a live podcast would people watch because i did instagram lives and there were people there on the other side watching many you know do i do a live podcast once a week do i do more podcasts uh, executing podcasts with cameras a lot harder a lot more expensive uh, a lot more you need a lot more resources but recording a podcast a couple of more times a week let's say two or three times recording just audio where you could listen on spot spotify or apple or whatever a lot easier you know i do the final remixing it's really easy in in in, in the sense of the post production after i record the podcast okay and i don't edit i don't i you know sometimes we'll if there's something in there i might take out if it's i need to take it out but if not 99 percent of the time i'm recording beginning to end and uh, what you see is what you see what you hear is what you hear and so i've thought of do i do a daily drive-by and i need to hear from you so your input is very important to me is there an audience for me doing a live podcast one time a week a few times a week late at night you know crappy weather uh i know people are more indoors with now the weather's nice people are more outside summer's coming i thought about to myself do i continue to do a podcast in the summer where people are busy and have other things to do in life but i don't want to stop doing this i just need to find that i've had conversations with people who i truly respect in this field i just need to find something that i could use my full you know basically what i'm saying is i need to cater to feed the animal and I'm the animal, okay? So I'm hungry to do more, but in order for me to do more, I need to hear from you. Do you like the guests that I have on? Do you like when I have on guests? Do you like when I do solos? Uh, do you like longer podcasts, shorter podcasts? Podcasts shouldn't matter, by the way, when they're three, four hours, because your biggest consumers will listen to it because they can't get enough, and the people who wanna listen to for three minutes, it's there for three minutes, and it's there for three hours. So that's the beauty of podcasts. You know, you go on Spotify, you see episode 24 is this, episode 23 is that, episode 22 he has a guest. You pick and choose what you want. It's a catalog, and it's a continuous catalog. That's what's so beautiful about it. Radio is different. You come on, you turn on the mic. Oh, did you hear Freeway say this this morning? Did you hear they were talking about this? No, I missed it, and that's it. It's gone. Unless you recorded it and you're playing it back somehow, it's gone forever. So... It's a completely different animal. It's live, it's in the moment, you're there, you're driving, you're hearing it. This one you could be listening to while you're driving as well, but it's a completely different animal, as I said. So I need to hear from you, your thoughts, your opinions, your comments publicly. You could DM me if that's what you choose to do. If you wanna be more discreet, I don't care, it doesn't bother me. Do you wanna hear this podcast a few more times a week? You think it would be beneficial uh, for, for you if it were more in the style that I did radio in the sense that it was daily. If I didn't have the visual aspect, would anybody mind? Of course, I spent a lot of money on these 4K cameras and I don't wanna get rid of them, so there's still an element to the visuals that I would use, but I'm just trying to figure out how to put out the best possible product and reach the most people. And for me to do so, after having been canceled by some listeners, sponsors, based on some of my thoughts and opinions, which I never thought were out of control, they were just my honest thoughts about things. But you know, we live in a world that is very fragile and you can't say certain things. Saying the truth sometimes and being honest hurts you more than it benefits you. So I'm just trying to figure out after everything that's happened, we're 24 episodes deep, how you on the other side perceive this and going forward what your thoughts are are on the drive-by so i thank you 
Let me know what you think. I expect to see a lot of comments because I'm expecting people to have listened right through and gotten to this point. And I hope to hear from you. And it's never a bother. And I love the fact to hear from so many people. I like when people share their location, where they're listening to the podcast from. It's exciting. You know, as I said, this podcast came in roaring and then reality sets in, you know, seven, eight episodes in that it's it's a grind. It's not easy. And it's just one time a week. How do we improve it? You tell me. Please subscribe to YouTube if you haven't already. Tell your friends. Word of mouth is everything. So telling your friends that I have a podcast, Freeway Frank has a podcast called The Drive-By, helps me sharing the Instagram page, sharing the videos, whatever it takes. Agree, great. Disagree, great. No problem. Reach me. Tell me what you think. And don't forget that you mean the world to me. Because without you on the other side... Without you there watching, there's no reason for me to continue doing this. Let's be honest. Because I get a kick out of doing this. It's a hobby. It's fun. It was part of my livelihood. And I really enjoy this new aspect of the podcasting medium. But I need to find out what are people thinking. It's not like radio. People would tell you radio, you know, right in the moment. They would call you up and go, I can love you. You're the best. See you in public. You're amazing. They never tell you they hate you in public sometimes. Uh, but, you know, they tell you right there, Frank, love you, love you, love that you did that. I didn't like that. Blah, blah, blah. You suck, whatever the case is. But it was so instant. And this, you really don't hear that much feedback unless people are commenting below and you're saying something that might be a little bit more polarizing they might have bigger opinions about. But if not, it's a different type of um, feedback that you're getting on, on these podcasts. So I hope to hear from as many people as possible and let me know because I'm I'm thinking of not ending, of course, but changing this podcast a little bit. I need to hear from you. What is it about this podcast that makes it tick for you? What is it, in your opinion, that you like, what you don't like, be honest, and what you would appreciate more? Love to hear from you. The Drive-By, episode 24, brought to you by Playground. Look, Playground, I'm a little biased because they've treated me well. I walk in there, I feel like, you know, remember Cheers? You want to go to a place where everybody knows your name? That's how I feel when I walk into Playground. I'm a poker player. I love playing poker. I haven't played too much in the last couple of years, only twice in, at, at Playground. But now as everything is reopened, I plan to play more. And they've always treated me well. As a matter of fa fact, if you see some of their billboards, the playground billboards around town, you know, they talk about the experience of playground. They talk about their staff and how they go above and beyond. That's what it's about. You hear criticisms from other places that it's just, you know, a place people go to to work, not this place. This place, you're treated like family. This place, whether you're somebody who walks in as a, as a client, you know, of, of playground, you walk in or you're, you're an employee there, they treat everybody with respect. And this is why I love the place. It's a gaming paradise. Whether you're a poker player, electronic gaming device player, from their jackpots, from their restaurant at the rail, and the way they take care of you the minute you walk in, Attention to detail is what they're all about. Listen, I could have stopped talking about this a minute and a half ago, but I'm going to keep going because you haven't experienced a place like Playground anywhere else. Even when you go to Vegas, they don't quite treat you the way they treat you at Playground. I'm telling you, it's customer service elevated. That's what it should say. <laughs> Gaming elevated, customer service elevated. Click on the link below. Do me a favor. Click on the link below. Get your $10 in free play if you're watching on YouTube or go if you're listening to playground.ca slash Freeway Frank. Thank you so much for watching episode 24 of The Drive-By, and I hope to hear from you and read your comments. We'll catch you again next week. Thank you. This is The Drive-By with Freeway Frank.
Watch all episodes of The Drive-By on YouTube. Listen in on Spotify, Apple, Google, Amazon, Podbean, and tune in.